In the words of Franklin D. Roosevelt, democracy cannot succeed unless those who express their choice are prepared to choose wisely. The real safeguard of democracy, therefore, is education. Welcome to a discussion about Holbrook's proposed pre-kindergarten to grade 12 facility. The aim of this program is to inform the voters of Holbrook about the building, the finances, and many other frequently asked questions. I sat down with members of the Permanent School Building Committee in order to get my information straight from the source. Good evening. I'm Tim Gordon, Chairman of your Board of Selectmen and member of the Permanent School Building Committee. The vote for a new K-12 school building is quickly approaching. We have come a long way over the past three years from this plan being proposed as a notional concept in 2011 to where we are today. Getting from there to here has been quite a journey. Many have worked extremely hard to get us to this point, hours and hours of deliberation and planning to make sure that the proposal we bring to you, the voters, is a viable solution to our needs. Safe to say, we took a long and hard look at the alternatives. As chairman of the Board of Selectmen, I insisted that we do so because I knew that this day would come where I'd be asking the public for their consideration. And I wanted to be able to assure the voters that we were diligent in reaching our conclusion. But now we need your help. So I'm asking that you familiarize yourself with the proposal, consider the benefits of the K-12, and vote on November 4th. The Permanent School Building Committee considered three new construction options, a 6 to 12, a K to 8, and the K to 12. The 6 to 12 proposal was short-sighted. If built, we would still have three schools and would still need to address significant capital improvement costs for the two older schools. The K to 8 option had some merit if there was a clear solution for our 9 to 12 population. But the fact is, there isn't. Furthermore, the difference in the town cost between the K-8 to and the K-12 to is about $8 million, about a 20% increase to include the high school in the project, and in so doing, better opening the door to regionalization. The K-12 to option emerged as the most beneficial. It is a one-building solution to all our facility needs. Think about this. Unlike many other towns with multiple school building projects, that the taxpayers will pay, we have consolidated all our needs into one project. So although it is the most expensive of the three, there will not be a need to build another school in the years ahead, or for most of us, in our lifetime. Also, it is regionalization ready. We had a preliminary regionalization study performed in 2013, which identified many benefits to a regional district with Avon. Our town meeting recently formed a regional study committee, which is the first step in the regionalization process. That committee is currently reaching out to Avon to explore the benefits. The K-12 school has designed provisions to easily convert to a regional school. And finally, the reimbursement rate of this project is 69.12%. This is extremely high and perhaps indicative of the value the MSBA sees in this particular project. The presenters to follow will provide much more detail about this proposal. I hope you find it informative, and I thank you for tuning in. Hi, my name is Beth Tolson. I am a member of the Holbrook School Committee, also Regionalization Study Committee, and the Permanent School Building Committee. I've also been in education for over 30 years and I'm currently an adjunct professor at UMass Boston in the School of Education. While it's been important for us to design a building that has separate areas for elementary and secondary, and the design does do that, at the same time there are some educational benefits to those two levels being on the same site. And some of those benefits would include the ability to share resources such as materials, equipment, and staff, as well as to provide opportunities for internships for some of the upper level students as part of their coursework to work at the lower levels. And in addition to those benefits is also the benefit of the professionals within the building having opportunities to work together in professional learning communities by being on the same site. Hello, my name is Dan Moriarty, Jr. I have been a resident of the town of Holbrook for the past 50 years. 
and I'm the chairman of the Permanent School Building Committee here in town. I think the important thing about this new school project is the fact that we are building this for the children of Holbrook. That's every single child in Holbrook will have a chance to go into a brand new school. That's impressive. We're even talking about children that aren't even born yet. I think if we go back some 65 years ago or 60 years ago, there was a whole committee that went through the same episodes that we have gone through to build the high school, build the South School, and build the Kennedy. That was over 60 years ago. I think the time is right now that we have to replace these and we can combine them into one project. We have to remember that the children of Holbrook cannot go to the polls and vote a new school for themselves. So we as the citizens of Holbrook have to show responsibility and vote for them. Thank you. Hello, I am Patricia Lally, Superintendent of the Holbrook Public Schools. I would like first to take this opportunity to announce that after many years at Level 3, the Holbrook Public School District has attained Level 2 status with the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. The levels range from 1 through 5, with 1 being the highest student performance level. Our goal is to assist our students in achieving Level 1 academic status. A new facility would greatly support this effort. Building one pre-kindergarten to grade 12 school serves both the students and the town. Many studies have demonstrated that limiting transitions between schools is beneficial for students' adjustment and learning. With one building, students will not experience the disruptions that moving from one school to another can cause. The faculty could also be shared without the obstacle of having to travel from school to school. Other resources and programs could be shared among all grade levels. Foreign language instruction could be initiated at an earlier age when students are more able to absorb an additional language. The consolidation of schools would allow participation for all students in after-school activities such as band, chorus, and drama with the appropriate facilities and staffing. Programs such as robotics, engineering, and media could be introduced at the lower grades through shared faculty and resources. In addition, all students would enjoy state-of-the-art facilities and technology. Without needing transportation, a pre-K to grade 12 school would enable vocational experiences for juniors and seniors who are interested in teaching at the elementary level. Providing internships for juniors and seniors to assist in the preschool program would aid preschool teachers and would allow a career exploration opportunity for upperclassmen. Maintenance of the building will also be a simpler accomplishment. Eliminating three outdated buildings with one modern facility will ensure that troubleshooting and systems oversight are done on a daily basis. With our new Director of Facilities, the custodial staff, and the maintenance requirements from MSBA, the new building will always be in peak condition. With our staff trained on the new computerized systems, our own custodians and maintenance professionals will be able to address issues and needs without delay. The Junior Senior High School is again engaged in the accreditation process. The school was placed on probation for a number of items, but at this point only the building condition remains unresolved. An unaccredited school affects property value and the prospects of college-bound students. Colleges undergo the same accreditation process through the regional association in their area. In our case, it is the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, or NEASC. Therefore, colleges value high schools that can assure their quality of education through adherence to the NEAS standards. Likewise, prospective homeowners expect quality schools to ensure stable property values. The town would have a modern, first-class facility where civic and social events can convene. An auditorium, expandable gym, and a reception area will provide enviable community spaces and opportunities. The consolidation of all grades into one building removes a need to address the age and poor condition of three buildings. Maintaining one building may result in a savings for the town. The buildings currently waste precious resources. The town may realize savings from energy efficient systems and green building components. The JFK and the South Schools could be sold or repurposed. The new school facility is an educational, financial, and socioeconomic asset to the town of Holbrook. The current buildings cannot accommodate 21st century learning. 
our students must compete with more technologically experienced students from other communities. Seizing the almost 70% reimbursement rate from the MSBA serves both the students and the taxpayers of Holbrook. Thank you. Now that we have heard from the Permanent School Building Committee, we thought it would be a good time to bring in architect Kent Kovacs from Flansburg and Associates. Kent has been with this project since its conception. He knows this building inside and out. Let's take a walk through with Kent to get all the fine points of this proposed school building. This is a walkthrough of the new Holbrook Pre-K through 12 school. It's a great project with two independent school wings, one for the Pre-K 5, the other is an independent 6 through 12 wing. As we walk around the building, this wing is the 612. It's a two-story building. It has a dedicated parent pickup drop-off, bus, and entry. Here we have the auditorium with Stage House for Performing Arts, a new gymnasium, also new district offices. As we rotate around the building, this is the Pre-K through 5 wing. This wing has two dedicated play areas for Pre-K and 1, and a dedicated play area for grades 1 through 5. This is an artist's rendering of the feel and spirit of the school, paying close attention to material and scale. Now we'll enter into the Pre-K 5 wing. Through the vestibule, this is the point of control and security. Into the library, we see the use of vibrant colors and materials as uh, important for establishing the, uh, the feel for this school. As we walk down the hallway, we'll enter into a general classroom. Here you can see natural light, smart board technology, flexible furniture. And now we'll enter into the cafeteria space. This is a dedicated cafeteria space for this school with kitchen, seating for all students, and a stage component for performing arts. So the students can have a stage production without going into the other building. Here we'll enter into the 612 building. Again, through the main entrance is a vestibule for security. You'll see in this animation that there's breakout spaces, spaces that are for collaborative work, such as this Team Commons to the left. And here we get a look at the STEM Commons. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. We have the robotics lab and science labs converge at this one point. And you can see the students working on a robotics experiment. This could be a really exciting space for the kids. Now we'll enter into the shared core portion of the building that comprises of the cafeteria, the auditorium, gymnasium, and media center. You can see the gymnasium above and the cafeteria. Here's a look at the feel for the space, an abundance of natural light, the play with material with wood paneling. And as we go up the stairs, we see the gymnasium for grades 6 through 12, bleacher seating for 500, the fitness room, and the media center. We envision many of the spaces you've just seen to have an added benefit for community use. The need for the project is to establish a long-term solution for your deteriorating schools. It's also to avoid the loss of high school accreditation and provide educational spaces that meet the MSBA state standards. Uh, this slide speaks to the size of the school. The existing elementary schools are 31% below the MSBA standards. The existing junior-senior high school site is 21% below the MSBA standards. And a new pre-K 12 option will increase educational spaces by 44,000 square feet uh, to meet the MSBA requirements. 
Advantages of a pre-K-12. This consolidates resources in order to provide additional services and space. It also allows faculty and staff and specialists to become more accessible to students. In addition, it provides state-of-the-art security for safety of the students and will retain great teachers. The value of an accredited high school. This assures parents, students, and the community members that the town provides a quality educational program. It also assures colleges that graduates of that high school were provided with an educational program that maximizes students' learning. And it's shown that a town that loses accreditation has an impact on the property values. The New England Association of Schools and Colleges, they're the group that conducts the evaluation for accreditation. And since 2005, the junior senior high school has been on probation. Here's a list of points from a lengthy report that mainly speak to the conditions of the existing school, that this school, over 50 years old, is not conducive for effective learning. Each of the existing schools were evaluated by the architect and engineers. The engineers consisted of a structural engineer, mechanical, electrical, fire protection. They created a lengthy report, about 1,000 pages, and evaluated the schools, each approximately uh, 50 to 60 years old. They all have similar conditions. They have leaky windows, leaky roofs, ADA accessibility issues, and as you can see from these slides, there's falling ceiling tiles, there's ponding on the roofs, there's noisy mechanical equipment, cracks at the foundation. Uh, the exterior envelope, this would be the brick and the glass, lacks insulation. And those were all important parts of the evaluation process to determine that these three schools needed to be replaced. The design consolidates your three existing schools onto one site. This is the junior senior high school site. It's proposed that there's a pre-K through five academic house, a six through 12 academic house, and a community wing that serves the 612, but also the community. It has an auditorium, a gymnasium, a media center, and the district offices. Each of those three components can be internally separated with doors that can be locked and alarmed, and they have their own dedicated exterior entrances. The new building is highlighted in gray with the academic houses indicated. What I want to focus on is the pre-K-5 area. That's a pre-K-5 dedicated drop-off for parents. There's a dedicated bus drop-off separated from the vehicles for eight buses. There's the main entry. Also, two play areas. One for pre-K and kindergarten, the other for grades one through five. There's a continuous loop road around the entire building, and this length is necessary to accommodate the traffic for pickup and drop off. This also reduces any backup onto South Franklin Street by being able to pull those cars off of South Franklin um, faster. Now let's look at the 612 area. There's a dedicated bus drop off, main entrance, and parent drop off. The two main entrances that are established in this plan, they're about 400 feet apart, so there's some good distance between these two schools. We have the new athletic facilities located along the southern portion of the property, a new multi-purpose field with running track, a new baseball, and new softball. This site plan speaks to grades six through 12 during pickup and drop off. The loop road is highlighted in blue. You'll see red dash lines, those indicate the 52 uh, car queuing that's required for the grade 6 through 12. So that's the amount of cars necessary on the day-to-day -day pickup and drop-off. And this loop road provides the appropriate length needed to accommodate all this activity. And here's a look at the pre-K-5 site plan uh, relative to parent pickup and drop-off. You can see the red dash lines indicate approximately 30 cars for pickup and drop-off. And one important aspect that goes to separating the two schools the 612 will start one hour prior than the pre-K-5. The new school is proposed on the junior senior high school site. The existing school, as you can see, is highlighted in gray. The red dash line indicates the construction fence. This is the area of construction activity. There is a 
construction access for vehicles. That's the blue highlighted roadway. This allows a separation from the day-to-day -day activity of the school from that of the construction activity. Indicated in black will be parking and the loop roads and service, again, to serve the day-to-day -day activity of the existing school. The two existing academic wings are located on the south side of the site and provide some distance between the construction activity and this will help reduce the noise impact on the classrooms. And here's an aerial view of the completed campus. After the existing junior high school is demolished, new fields will be constructed along the southern edge of the property. Here's a look at the exterior of the new school. This speaks to the materials, the texture, the scale of the building. We want to provide a building that's not imposing to the students, but welcoming. Now looking at the floor plans, this is the first floor of the school. In the light blue, that's the pre-K through five wing. At this level, we have kindergarten, pre-K, first and second grade, administration and guidance adjacent to the entrance. They have their own media center and their own cafeteria. That red dash line indicates a solid wall where the schools are separated. There's one door that's used for service that will be locked and alarmed at all times, and that'll limit any activity between the schools. Shifting over to the wing for grades six through 12, that's in a darker shade of blue. We have the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade located at this level. It's adjacent to the administration and the guidance for added supervision. Also, there's a teacher's planning area uh, centralizing the plan, again, for additional supervision of the uh, grades six, seven, and eight. In the center of the plan, we have the community wing. This serves activity for the grades six through 12 with an auditorium, a cafeteria, the arts, a video lab, band, and robotics. And if we shift north in the plan, we have the district office, custodial, and the kitchen. The second floor plan, in the pre-K through five wing, we have general classrooms for grades three uh, through five and access to their dedicated gymnasium. The grades six through 12, these are general classrooms for the high school. And if we go into the community portion of the building, the shared core portion of the building, we have the gymnasium, a fitness room, an auditorium, and the media center. And here's a look at one of the exciting spaces we have in the plan. This is the STEM Commons. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math and focuses on 21st century learning. We have the robotics and the science labs and they converge. The kids are working on a robotics experiment here and this is one of the great aspects of this new school. Here's a look at the cafeteria. This is a cafeteria for grades 6 through 12. Grades, uh, the middle school will have its own dedicated lunch followed by two uh, high school lunches. And how are these schools separated? This blue solid wall and the red dash line indicate the separation of the pre-K from the 612. That wall has one set of doors that will be locked and alarmed and it's for service only. It will have key card access and if that door is open there'll be an alarm that goes back to the main office. They do share a kitchen. That's the only component that they share in this plan. Also Besides physically separating the buildings with the wall, visually they're separated. The pre-K-5 cafeteria views out to the north and the 612 cafeteria views out to the south. So we're looking at different ways, not only physically separating with the wall, but also visually reducing the, um, the interaction between the two groups. Here's a look at the upper level. As you can see, the solid blue wall cutting through the gymnasiums, and that's how it's uh, divided at the upper level. This building will be a green building. It has 2% additional reimbursement by the state, and it meets this important criteria for sustainable sites, water saving features, energy efficiency, materials and resource, and proper indoor environmental quality. Were other options considered? Yes, there's many design alternatives considered. Here you can see four options that speak to different grade groupings, a 612 option, a 712 option, a pre-K 12 option, and a pre-K 8 option, of which many designs were studied on the junior senior high school site. Part of the criteria for evaluating these options, here you see the pre-K 8 option. Uh, these are some points that were taken from the Mars Consulting Group that studied the regionalization. 
This does not address grades 9 through 12. The 9 through 12 would have to be tuitioned out or regionalization agreement prior to the MSBA approval. There's no excess capacity in surrounding towns. It would require the demolition of the junior senior high school. And with this type of plan, there would not be an auditorium or a football field or track. And this option would cost seven million less than the pre-K-12 option that we're looking at. So through evaluating those options, the pre-K-12 option was the best option that met the need for the project. It's also the only option that can be converted into a regionalized school at no cost to Holbrook. And um, since February uh, 2014, Holbrook and Avon have continued conversations on regionalization. What is the total project cost? The total project cost is $102.9 million. What is included in the total project cost? The uh, construction is included, as well as the site works, as well as the demolition of the existing building. In addition, the furnishings, fittings, and technology, or educational technology is also included, as well as fees and contingencies. Will the MSBA share in the cost of this project? Oh, absolutely. The Permanent School Building Committee has worked very, very closely with the MSBA over these last two years. And on July 30th of this year, 2014, the MSBA Board of Directors voted to approve the project and, and provide a reimbursement up to $55.7 million. When was the last time the town of Holbrook built a school? The last school was built in 1963. What options for the Holbrook schools have been studied? Nine options have been studied, and after long and careful analysis and much discussion, the pre-K-12 building was decided upon, and it will be built on the property of the Junior Senior High School. Um, the other two buildings will be either sold or repurposed. Has regionalization been studied? Yes, it has been studied. The Mars Group was hired to do a regionalization study, and they concluded that the pre-K-12 option allowed flexibility in order to have regionalization if that were to happen. Um, the, we will continue studying that and the design of this option will allow for regionalization if we were to reach that type of agreement. Can the new school option be reduced in size? In order to provide the educational spaces needed and meet the requirements for reimbursement by the MSBA, the new school must be sized as it is in the current design. If we decrease the number of school choice students at the junior and senior high level, can we make the new building smaller? No, the um, MSBA based our population on the amount of students in Holbrook, and it did not include school choice because they don't include that factor into um, building projects. Why not simply renovate the existing building instead? Well, the study determined that the age and condition of the junior senior high school building, which is about is 57 years or more old, would not be appropriate and that um, we'd have to bring that building up to code with a renovation. And the MSBA um, determined that it would not be eligible for reimbursement. So the renovation addition would cost almost as much as the town share of the new pre-K to 12 building. If the new building doesn't pass, can we use the state money just to repair the existing building? No, Dave, that is not an option. The MSBA has um, funded this project and this project only for the town of Holbrook, and any other projects would have to, we'd be starting the process all over again. Will the new school fit on the existing junior-senior high site? Yes, it'll fit on the existing junior-senior high school site along with the improved roadways, parking, fields. The two existing elementary schools are too small for the pre-K-12 option. Also, the new school can be built behind the existing school on the fields uh, without the requirement for expensive phasing and disruption to the students who will not have to be relocated during construction. Why not find a new site? The school fits on the junior-senior high school site along with the roads and the, uh, the fields. A new site would increase the project cost and would not be reimbursed by the state. Will the elementary students be separated? Yes, the pre-K students will be completely separated from the 6 to 12 students. 
There are two buildings that have separate entrances, separate administration, and um, the students, there are walls between the buildings so that there will be no crossing through during the day. Will more teachers need to be hired because the increased number of classrooms in the new building? They should not, there should not need to be any more teachers hired for this because we will be consolidating our efforts to um, share faculty and um, the amount of classrooms right now um, are manned by um, enough faculty. So the only thing that would require more faculty would be if we created new programs and uh, had new electives. Will the traffic be impacted? The traffic study has been completed and it allows for the backup to be eliminated on South Franklin Street and around the existing school. The flow of traffic will be around the entire structure and it'll have a lot more spacing for queuing of cars to relieve the traffic. Why create a synthetic multi-purpose athletic field? Now, this type of field is, uh, is great to be utilized by different sports such as football, soccer, field hockey, lacrosse. It's more durable than grass and can be used throughout the seasons by the school and the community. What happens if the project is approved by the taxpayers? If the voters approve the project on November 4th, things will start moving very quickly. Uh, we move into design development phase. Um, then we get into the construction document phase. Uh, it gets very busy for, um, for the uh, Permanent School Building Committee uh, and the town because we'll be getting input from the town uh, throughout the process. Uh, and then construction will start in November of 2015 with occupancy scheduled for December of 2017. Will the selected design option work for regionalization in the future? Yes, it will. It will work as either a pre-K to 12 building as it is now, or if we were to regionalize in the future with Avon, it, the numbers would work. Will there be cost to, to convert the selected design option to a regionalized school in the future? No, there will be no additional cost because the numbers work there'll be no additional costs if we were to regionalize the size of the in the spaces and the numbers of students would um, essentially be the same. What is the tax impact? The town treasurer has been developing the, the impact to taxes in a range. Today's interest rate is three and a half percent and providing that we're borrowing the money in about a year or so he felt comfortable to be able to show it as a range between three and a half percent and five and a half percent. Now that range equates to approximately uh, $2.48 per thousand valuation at a three and a half percent interest rate and $3.05 per thousand on a five and a half percent valuation. And then looking at that a little bit uh, deeper, based on an average a home value of $231,800, the annual tax base, annual tax impact for at a three and a half percent interest rate is uh, $575 and at a five and a half percent interest rate is $706. When will the town be voting on this project? Okay, so there's, there's actually two important votes. The first vote that we're going to have will be at town meeting and that's scheduled for October 22nd and that vote is to authorize the borrowing because we still have to authorize the borrowing for the project. Um, the second vote is to the, the voters of Holbrook, and that's scheduled for November 4th. Um, and that vote is to allow us to uh, exclude the cost of this project from the limits of Prop 2.5. So it's a two-part vote, one for town meeting to authorize the borrowing. The second one is for the voters to approve raising the funds uh, it's called a debt exclusion vote. Raise the funds outside of the limits of Prop 2.5. Why can't the town start construction earlier than the fall of 2015? Well, given the, uh, the debt exclusion vote on November 4th, uh, 2014, and with the successful passage of that vote, it'll take the architect about 10 months to develop the detailed construction drawings to be able to give to the contractor. Factoring in bidding after that approximately one to two months, that brings us to November of 2015 for a construction start. What is the value of having an accredited high school? An accredited high school allows the townspeople, parents, and students to feel that their course of studies is valid and it meets certain standards. 
Uh, the New England Association of Schools and Colleges sets forth these standards and colleges also have to um, adhere to these standards. So a college would be likely to choose students that come from accredited high schools because it is the same process and the same assurance that they have that they are um, meeting certain standards in the college. Um, I think that um, our accreditation is, depends on this building. So we really do need to have this building because that is one of the pieces that uh, NIESC has uh, cited us in violation of. What if this project is not approved by the town? If the project is not approved by the town, we would have a problem with our accreditation. Since we are on probation at the time, um, we were last accredited in 2005 and we were cited for having um, facility problems. If we do not get a new building, we will still be in that same situation. And since we're on probation, the next step is um, not being accredited. And we would certainly not want that to happen. In addition, um, we would have to bear the total, the town would have to bear the total costs of renovating the high school, junior, senior high school. Um, there'd be no reimbursement for that renovation. Now that we've seen the building and answered some of the most frequently asked questions, it's time to discuss another very important part. How much will this cost you, me, and the town of Holbrook? This time we look toward our overall project manager, Joel Seeley, from Sims, Maney, and McKee Associates. This man left no stone unturned when it came to guiding Holbrook through the Massachusetts School Building Authority landscape. He knows everything there is to know about the project costs, reimbursement rates, and the process to build this school. Thank you, Dave. The MSBA is the Massachusetts School Building Authority, uh, and they're the state agency that oversees all school construction in the state of Massachusetts. And the building committee, the Permanent School Building Committee, has been working with the MSBA over the last two years very, very diligently. The MSBA has a very rigorous and structured approach to doing all of their studies, and over the last two years, the MSBA staff has worked very closely with the Permanent School Building Committee such that all of the reports that have been generated have been reviewed and improved by the MSBA over those last two years, leading up to a very important milestone, which was on July 30th of this year, 2014, in which the MSBA Board of Directors voted to approve your project. They voted to approve the project and provide $55.7 million in reimbursement towards that project. The overall project cost is $102.9 million. And factoring in the state reimbursement of $55.7 million has a town uh, cost to the town of Holbrook of $47.2 million. Looking at the reimbursement and how the state figures that, they figure it the same way for every community across the state. There's a first, there's a base rate for the town based on your economics of the town, and then there's incentive points, in which case there's a uh, one, zero to two points uh, incentive points for maintenance, of which the town has received 1.3%. There is a percentage point for construction manager at risk, which the state has recognized to be of value uh, to each town as, as a construction methodology. And then, as Kent had said earlier, this project will have uh, very high levels of energy efficiency and green design and the state has awarded the town two additional incentive points for a total of 69.12 percent reimbursement for eligible costs. And looking at your, your neighbors and other projects that have done uh, in, a, in the adjacent um, region, you have a very, very high reimbursement percentage compared to those other uh, school districts. The overall tax impact uh, to the citizens of Holbrook has been calculated by the town treasurer. So based on a $47.2 million project, that tax impact to the uh, average uh, residential home value of $231,800 is between $2.48 and $3.05 per thousand. And, and why is that a range? Because today's interest rate, if we were to borrow today, would be about 3.5%. Knowing that we're going to borrow probably in about a year or so, that uh, the town treasurer has um, provided us a range from 3.5% to 5.5% because it's, it's very unpredictable about what the interest rates would be. But they will definitely be within that range. 
So for the uh, annual tax impact for that residence of 231800 that is an annual increase of between $575 per year and $706 per year. For a home assessed value of $231,800, that cost would be between $575.23 and $706.68 per year, or if you look at it in a monthly basis, $47.93 per month to $58.90 per month, or on a daily basis, $1.59 uh, or $1.96. Looking at the overall tax range as a, um, a basis of assessing between your home values, the treasurer has provided a, a chart to be able to assess what your uh, impact may be. So starting between an average uh, a household value of $150,000 all the way up to $500,000, this chart shows the impact on an annual basis from a 3.5% interest rate to a 5.5% interest rate. As part of the MSBA overall study, they required us to do a, a review of what it would cost to do repairs only to the junior senior high school without any educational improvements. And they used that as the baseline to compare all the other options too. Although this project um, wouldn't have any state reimbursement because it doesn't meet any of the educational needs or, or the MSBA educational standards, it establishes the baseline cost for repairs only project. And it is only for the junior senior high school. So we needed to really factor in the cost for uh, elementary schools, South and, and JFK, for doing renovations and additions uh, to them so that we can have an accurate comparison between the pre-K-12 project and a repairs only project. And as you can see, the repairs only project with the future projects for South and JFK is actually more than the combined single project pre-K-12 after factoring a state reimbursement. During the course of our many pr uh, community presentations and forums, of which we've done eight so far, there's been several questions that have been raised as it relates to what are other communities doing that are similar sized population as, as Holbrook in that approximately 10,000 um, population range. And so, We've investigated that with MSBA, and here's uh, several projects, several communities that are in the same similar size project that have invested in their schools just recently, many of them new high schools, new high school, middle schools. Also during the course of our many community forums, it was asked, what are our neighbors doing? Are they investing in their, investing in their school systems, uh, much like we're contemplating here in Holbrook? And the answer is yes. We worked with MSBA to get an accurate portrayal of the various communities that are immediately surrounding Holbrook and have they invested in, in their schools and whether it's new construction or renovation and additions. And this chart shows that the majority of your neighbors have already, within the last 15 years, invested in their school systems. We have several key dates in our schedule coming up. The first of which is October 22nd, uh, 2014, in which that's your special town meeting in which you would, your town meeting representatives would vote to appropriate funding for the overall project. Following that on November 4th is the ballot uh, election vote. And on this vote, you as a citizen, citizenry will vote to uh, exempt the project costs from Proposition 2 and a half. That ballot question looks similar to this, where it begins with, shall the town of Holbrook be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition 2 and a half the amounts required to pay for the bonds issued for the project. If you indicate yes, you're um, approving of the project. If you indicate no, uh, you're not approving of the project. Followed by a successful vote on November 4th, uh, Kent and his team of architects and engineers will then develop the detailed construction drawings that will go to the contractor. The contractor will then uh, bid the project in the summer and fall of 2015 start construction in the fall 2015 and open up the new building in December of 2017. After which we'll be demolishing the existing junior senior high school and constructing the play fields and roadways that will be uh, located to the south of the new school. All of that work will be completed by August 2018. So as you can see this is a very exciting project for the town of Holbrook. 
We are, in fact, in a unique situation where we have a student count that's conducive to a one-building solution, and we have facility needs in all grades. Building and maintaining one school is far more economical to the taxpayers than potentially needing to build, renovate, and or maintain multiple schools. Please consider this point when you vote. Concerns regarding the costs of this project are not lost on me. There is no denying that the ask is high. But there is also no denying that the need is real. A new school can energize a community, attract new families, and most importantly, provide state-of-the-art learning for our students. The possibilities that a new school offers our community are endless. It's up to the voters to take the first step in turning them into a reality. Thank you. If you have more questions, the Permanent School Building Committee would be happy to answer them for you. You can come to a meeting or contact them online at www.holbrook.k12.us. It doesn't matter if you read or own, every resident of Holbrook that meets the voting requirements should vote on this ballot question. If you're not registered to vote, then visit our clerk's office at the town hall or visit the Secretary of State William Galvin's website. I hope I've given you plenty of factual information to help you make your choice when voting. Thank you for spending time with us. We will see you at the polls on November 4th.